Hi, this is Coach Tony Morgan, and today's video is on a Honeywell S plan. And we're going to be looking at fault finding on the Honeywell S plan, and you'll see this is going to be a really good video on how to fault find on this type of system. So you can see the bar in front of us is a Potterton, it's a Potterton Pro Max SL. And what's happening is um, the customer said they're getting hot water but no heating. So we're going to investigate what the problem is. The first thing what we've done is we've turned on the timer here, you can see. We've put it on for hot water, you can see the lights on. And the on indicator is showing there. Now what should happen is the boiler should be now be firing up. But as you can see, it's dead, no activation. We're going to go up to the airing cupboard upstairs and check there and to see why. I'm going to check the cylinder thermostat. So, on the um, Honeywell S plan, it means we've got two um, zone valves, motorized valves. These are normally located in the airing cupboard, which you'll see. And we're going to see um, the cylinder thermostat to see if that's activated because that's the next thing what needs to happen and then that sends a signal to the zone valve for the hot water and that then should in turn send a, a switch live back to the boiler to make it fire up but it's not done that now the reason why it may not have done that is one of the reasons is the hot water cylinder might be up to temperature. So if the cylinder thermostat is satisfied already, then this is why we're not getting no activation at the boiler. So our checks, what we're gonna do now is to see if that's the reason. Okay, we're upstairs at the cylinder. As I said, these are the two zone valves what make it an S plan. Now we need to just check to see which one is a hot water motorised valve. If you look at the pipe work, here, yeah, there's a pump. What you need to do is look at the rope to see the direction of the pump is pumping down. So if that's pumping down, it's going to be pumping towards the valves. So let's investigate. So it's coming like this, along here like that. So you've got the two valves as I said. So if we look at this first one, it's going down through the valve and going into the cylinder. So I'd say this is for the hot water and then that one's for the heating. So it goes through that zone valve, goes along there and it's going downwards. So that's going to the radiators. So that's how we identify which one's what. Look at the pump arrow. It's going towards the, the motorized valves and then determine it from there. So that's what you do first. The next thing we do on this lever here, see if we can move that across. So there's resistance on it, so that means it's closed. The other thing we, we know, or should notice, there's no pump activation. Pump's quiet as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not being energised. So there's like no demand. As I said, it could be the cylinder thermostat. Right. The cylinder thermostat on this unit is behind that box there. So we're going to open that up and look inside. Okay, I've removed the cover. And these are the thermostats. You can see there it says boiler control and then it's got element control. Let's see if we can turn that up. It's already up, so it's clicking like that. No activation. Let's try this one. We heard a little noise.
but still no pump. Right, the next thing to do is to go inside this connect box here. That's where the motorized valve is wired up. So we're going to check with our multimeter and do some fault finding. Right, what I'm going to do, I've got the cover off, you can see. I'm going to, um, this connection here, this is a switch line. This is what should be sending power out to the boiler and the pump. And then I'm going to find a neutral. Neutral. So that's a switch line, so there's nothing coming out there. Now if we look at these greys, these two greys, that's a permanent live at. Let me see if there's power there. So there's power there because on these on valves, they have like a permanent live ready for when that motor opens, it then sends the signal through micro switch to here. But there's nothing activating and one of the reasons is because they've got the motor not been told to be open so I'm now gonna this is a brown that's tell the motor to actually open this one could be from the heating one and there's another brown that's not happening either so, oh. about here, nothing there neither. At the moment, there don't appear to be no life in what's telling to start. I'm going to go back to the timer because the timer may not be possible to put no heat output. But what we'll do, we're going to check the heat inside now and then try that and see what happens on So now you can see the heat inside's on. But still, no activation. So go back upstairs now. I'm now checking this one. This is the heating. That again, it's not being told to start. Let's try it again. So, go to neutral. Let's see if anything on the brown there. No. Nope. No. So the other thing we're getting power on is on that one. So we've just got the permanent live coming in, nothing else. Right. Let's try here. No. Right. Okay, so. To me it looks like there's no power coming from the timer. So we just verified the heat inside now and we've done the hot water side and we get no power coming up to the control wires so it's downstairs again. We're going to take the timer off the wall and um, link it out and see what we, how we've got on with that. I just noticed here that the immersion heater switch is on and I felt here and it's hot so they're saying they was getting hot water but no heating so I reckon they've had the immersion heater on that's how they've been doing it and it's not the boiler what's working we're going to remove the screws underneath the back plate and take that off the wall and then they're saying you link it out now what I'm going to do is these two if we go a bit closer um, Three and four, three means for hot water, four means for heating, that's the outputs. This is the live coming in. That grey wire there, that's probably where that permanent live comes from. 
what we tested upstairs before yeah. on the grey because mm -hmm. it's straight off the live mm -hmm. so that's where it comes from and then this live is for the internal timing switching of the clock there so when the clock switches yeah. it make, you know it'll make an internal switch and send power there and power there right okay so yeah. operate the motorized valves well yeah. well they'll go to the thermostats first actually so what we're going to do we just need to put a live link from here to here and see if then the motorized valves start working right okay and if they do it means a timer is that fault yeah okay so that's our link what we put in and now what we're going to do we're going to turn the power on so that's an, a straight live over to the output of the heating and then we'll go and see what's happening upstairs in fact I hear the boiler make a noise because it's already done it he's put power on to the valves I hear the boiler there it's starting up the boiler is now starting mm. we'll go upstairs and make sure the pump's running yep the pump is running you can hear it so that is conclusive evidence evidence I should say my words correctly <laughs> that the timer is at fault because we turned it on no activation nothing we've bypassed it that's what you've seen and now the pump is on and the boiler's on so that's how you fault find on this type of system but to be honest you can do it on any type of system what's got this type of programmer so the problem was the programmer now what we're going to do we're going to go back downstairs turn the power off and swap the link over onto the hot water one so before we do that i'll just show you that this now no sorry it's this one see that's slack now mm -hmm. no resistance that easy because it's open so when it's slack like that it means it's open and when it's hard like that you hear the motor mm -hmm. going back see yeah it means it's closed it's not energized so that's another quick reference point how to know if there's power on there and it's open gotcha. so as i said we'll go down swap it over and then this one should be energized you can see we now changed over to the hot water one that's free so again we'll turn it on listen if we had a click here that's the valve just opening we may not get that click but we have there we go so you know same again it's working because the motor either valve was energized by that wire sit up there move the motor motor done switch live off the orange switch live then sends it to the pump and boiler and then now a presto boiler's fired how good am i <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is Coach Tony Morgan doing what he does best. So basically, as I said, we need a new timer. This is what's that fault here. Just gonna get a new one of these, swap it over on the back plate, set it up on the programs and Bob's the uncle.